intrusive igneous rocks are the rocks that form under the surface of the Earth. So anytime you have magma cooling under the Earth's surface, you'll get the formation of an igneous intrusive rock or intrusive igneous rock. Within this subcategory of igneous rocks, we have even more subcategories. So we go from igneous to intrusive, and now we have two categories that rely on a little bit of knowledge of Greek nomenclature. So there is a root word that is fan, comes from the Greek word phaneros, meaning visible. So the two words that incorporate this root word are phaneritic, that would be something that's super visible, and aphanitic, that prefix a meaning without, this is something that would be invisible. So a phaneritic or visible intrusive igneous rock is something that has visible crystals. So here we have really large grained granite, and this would be very clearly phaneritic. You can see the size of those crystals. And we have smaller grained granites. So these ones here, they have smaller grains, but you can still see the individual crystals with the naked eye. So these ones are also phaneritic. The difference between these phaneritic granite rocks is not only the size of the grains, you also have the difference in color. You see this one's a bit more pink, it's more of a felsic specimen. You have whether or not the grains look individual. The individual grains would just be a granite, or you know, here we have a true granite. Then we have what's called a granodiorite, which is a diorite granite looking specimen. And then diorite is where you just have two different minerals that you can see alternating in a black and white patchy specimen look. So this one kind of looks like a Dalmatian, which might help you to remember the word diorite, diorite Dalmatian. Those ones are the easily distinguished black and white specimens. So granodiorite, diorite, true granite. Granite gets its name from being able to see the individual grains. So grains, granite. Anytime you can see the crystals, it's going to be some type of a granite. So those sizes of crystals can vary quite a lot. So this brings us to another word, Ooh, porphyritic. Porphyritic is when you have different sizes of crystals. So this specimen here, we have different sizes of crystals. We have some smaller ones. We have some that are so large it just looks like a homogeneous rock. And we have these very big ones here. Not only is this one an intrusive igneous rock with phaneritic crystals, with porphyritic phaneritic, phaner <laughs> oh goodness, with porphyritic phaneritic crystals, so we can see them with the naked eye, they're different sizes, but there is another P word that we can use to describe it, which is pegmatic or pegmatitic. You can use either one. And to determine whether or not it's pegmatic, you use what's called the rule of thumb. So the rule of thumb, and this is going to show up in your uh, related activity, the rule of thumb is when the crystal is the same size as or larger than a human thumb. So these are huge crystals. These are pegmatic crystals in this large granite. Versus if you look at something else like this, the crystals, they're pretty big, you can see them, but they're not going to be larger than a thumb. So our other word, the aphanitic, meaning without visible crystals, we have a specimen here of basalt where you cannot see the individual crystals. So again, when I'm referring to aphanitic, and remember that fan means visible and a means without, this just means without visible, aka invisible. Not non-existent, you just can't see it. So there are crystals here. However, this specimen's crystals would have formed so quickly that the crystals didn't have time to grow. So that brings us to what causes the difference of this granite versus this granite, where you have these huge crystals. And that has to do with how quickly the crystals form. So if you have hot magma that is a really large volume area, you have a whole bunch of magma in one area, the middle of it is going to cool the slowest, whilst the outer portions will cool much faster. Similarly, if you have really shallow magma chambers, they're going to cool a lot more quickly because they are near the Earth's surface and nearer to those cooler temperatures. So if you're at your house or somebody else's house, and you see that they have granite countertops. Don't confuse them with the recycled glass quartz countertops 
or with the not so good in kitchens marble countertops. Those wouldn't be good because they're made out of carbonates and could easily dissolve if you spill vinegar on them. However, if you have granite, it's made out of quartz grains, quartz crystals, so therefore it's made out of silicates. It doesn't dissolve readily as carbonates do. So you see somebody has granite countertops and you see the individual grains of them and you can tell whether it cooled slowly because it has large pegmatic crystals or perhaps it cooled very quickly because even though you can see the individual crystals, they're much, much smaller. And then a third example here, we have teeny tiny crystals and this would have been from a specimen that's a lot more shallow. So let's say you're diagnosing the granite in your kitchen. You can diagnose it based off the grain size. You can refer to it as mafic or felsic. And you can also differentiate based on grain size if it's pegmatic or not. And then you could also use that other word of porphyritic that will show whether or not it has different size of grains. So that's our introduction to the intrusive igneous rock.